Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight, and here's what we have in store for you Monday, October 22nd, 2012. Tonight, score one for the Fourth Amendment. A truck driver stands up to an unconstitutional checkpoint. You hiding anything? Tell me. We can stay all day here playing your little game. Okay. Then... Nationally syndicated columnist Christopher Elliott publicly backs the InfoWars national opt-out and film campaign set to take place next month as he leads a charge to abolish dangerous TSA body scanners. And that's going to send a very powerful message to TSA that they can't keep pushing us around. Plus, sad news from the InfoWars as we mourn the loss of American icon and patriot, Russell Means. That's coming up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. We're sad to report today that Russell Means has died at the age of 72. Described by the LA Times as the most famous American Indian since Setting Bull and Crazy Horse, Russell Means died after a long struggle with cancer. He led the 71-day takeover of Wounded Knee, the site of a massive civilian massacre by U.S. government. Six times the number of civilians, men, women, and children, were killed there as at Waco 20 years ago. He was also a lifelong activist for liberty and a screen actor who later in life uh, most notably starred in films like Last the Mohican and Natural Born Killers. In 1988, he nearly became the Libertarian Party nominee for president, narrowly being beaten by Ron Paul. And he said in that campaign, if I want my people to be free, Americans have to be free. But unfortunately, he later said, and this is also very true, Indian policy has now been brought down upon American people, and the American people are the new Indians of the 21st century. Following the news, we'll replay Alex Jones' last interview with Russell Means, as well as a special report we did entitled, Welcome to the Reservation. Now, in that report, one of the things Russell Means said was that the American government's campaign against the Indians, one of the things that they did was, that was very effective was that they destroyed their food supply and their right of passage. Does that sound familiar? Isn't that what we see happening to Americans today? Our food supply is being destroyed by GMO, and we are losing our right to passage. We see Americans being put secretly on no-fly lists and not allowed to fly. We just reported last week about Wade Hicks, who found himself stranded in uh, mid-journey in Hawaii after he was put secretly on a no-fly list. Uh, we're proud to report that uh, with news coverage and help from other people, he was able to get home this last Thursday. And the mainstream media even picked up the story on Thursday uh, after he was cleared and vetted by the government after they realized there was no reason for him to be on the no-fly list. The resulting AP headline read, No Fly List Strands Man in Hawaii. But Wade Hicks was not stranded by a list. Wade Hicks was stranded by the person who put him on the list. Wade Hicks was stranded by a secret government process. The real question is, how can Americans be secretly placed on a list that punishes them with travel restrictions when they've never been convicted of a crime, uh, charged with a crime, or even notified that they've committed some suspicious crime? This goes back in history to the Star Chamber, which has become synonymous with the misuse and abuse of power. This is something that was ended in 1640 by the Habeas Corpus Act. And now we see, hundreds of years later, we see our government, the American government, overturning fundamental protections for our civil liberties like the Habeas Corpus Act and the Posse Comitatus Act. Uh, the question also comes up is why do we even need a no-fly list? We've got a TSA that is spending eight billion dollars a year sexually molesting people and conducting other nonsense at airports and yet it seems to be this is a tacit ad admission that that doesn't work. Well the good news is, is that resistance is building to the outrages of the TSA InfoWars has been joined in a call for opt-out and film by noted journalist Christopher Elliott. Uh, he's a consumer advocate, and he has publicly backed InfoWars' national opt-out and film campaign set to take place next month. 
Elliot is a nationally syndicated columnist featured in the Washington Post, New York Times, USA Today, and Wall Street Journal. Also co-founder of Consumer Travel Alliance. And this is what he had to say. Momentum is building for a second, more sustained opt-out protest, which would take place during an entire week from November 19th to 26th. The idea, first suggested by activist site InfoWars, is now being seriously discussed among activists and is gaining traction among passengers. If you recall, two years ago, there was a single day of protest that was scheduled, and the TSA's response was just to simply shut down the machines on the busiest travel day of the year, which might indicate that they know the machines were not necessary. And we have even more resistance to illegal government activities. We have a video of a truck driver who is standing up to unconstitutional checkpoints. 30 miles from the Texas border with Mexico, a truck driver was stopped. Uh, similar to what we saw a couple of months ago in California, Stephen Anderson, who refused to show his papers at this uh, site filmed by the truck driver. Uh, he continually was badgered by agents, and the truck driver continually responds, responds with, am I free to go? Uh, they badger him and say, are you ha do you have anything to hide? Are you breaking the law right now? But he just continued to repeat, am I free to go? That's an important thing to remember. If we don't stand for our Fourth Amendment rights, we will lose them. And they had no right to ask him this. He had done nothing. And there really wasn't anything that they were doing at the site. They started to suggest that maybe he was hiding somebody or some contraband, but they never searched the truck. They eventually let him go when all he did was say, am I free to go? Yes, in America, you are free to go. And perhaps even Congress is standing up to criminal bureaucracies. Uh, we have an update on the EPA human testing story out of North Carolina. The chairman of the U.S. House Committee's Science, Space, and Technology sent a five-page letter to the Office of Inspector General demanding that it probe whether the human testing was appropriate. Representative Carl Brown from Georgia asked the Inspector General to question the human testing with high concentration of pollutants that EPA considers dangerous at any level. The Congressional Committee also wants to know if the EPA obtained sufficient approval of its test subjects, obtained adequate informed consent from those being tested, and adequately addressed any adverse events that occurred in test subjects during or after the study. Uh, the American Tradition Institute Environmental Law Center has also filed a lawsuit against the EPA. What happened was, the, uh, if you recall our previous reports, uh, they actually hooked up a diesel truck's exhaust uh, and exposed uh, test subjects to very high levels of diesel exhaust, uh, levels that the EPA's director, Jackson, has gone on congressional record saying are lethal to people. They did this without sufficient informed consent. There was no written consent. As a matter of fact, they sought out people who were uh, asthmatics, elderly, had other health conditions to exacerbate it. And it appears that they were quite willing to uh, let human subjects get very sick in order to justify greater regulation. But the good news is that the Congress is now uh, alert, and it looks like there's going to be some hearings on this, as well as the individual lawsuit by ATI Environmental Law Center. And finally, in other news, President Obama appears to be getting re-election support from world leaders. Uh, Vice Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez, after winning a fourth term earlier this month, reportedly said that he would vote for Obama and the president would likely vote for him. But as well, President Hugo Chavez, after winning a fourth term earlier this month, reportedly said he would vote for Obama and that he thought the president would likely vote for him. And in June, Mariela Castro, daughter of Cuban President Raul Castro, said in a CNN interview, as a citizen of the world, I would like Obama to win. Now we have Vladimir Putin saying that the re-election of Obama could improve political relations between the two companies and called Obama a, quote, genuine person who really wants to change much for the better. Well, we know that Obama was mentored by Marxists like Frank Davis and Bill Ayers, and we know now that he has the support of many Marxist world leaders. And we know also that Obama returned the favor. If you'll recall, uh, in Honduras, there was a uh, Marxist attempt to take over power in Honduras and it was supported by Chavez and the Obama administration and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton supported the Marxists against the Honduran government. Well, that's it for the news. Our daily quote is 
Indian policy has now been brought down upon the American people, and the American people are the new Indians of the 21st century. That's Russell Means, who died today at the age of 72. We would like to thank you for your support of our 48-hour money bomb. We're nearly at $500,000 now, and more money will be coming in through the mail. Uh, if you'd like to make a contribution or if you'd like to see some of the great interviews uh, that, hap that Alex and other people conducted during the 48 hours, you can go to InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. Stay with us until after the break. We have Alex Jones's last interview with Russell Means, conducted earlier this year. If you would like to see more of this type of content, you can become a subscriber to PrisonPlanet.tv. And you can get a 15-day free trial where you can have all the access that you would normally have with a full paid membership. If you get a full paid membership, it helps to support our operations here. And that's it for the news portion of our program. I'm David Knight. My friends, Alex Jones here with a very important announcement. We are launching a new salvo in the info war because there is a war on for your mind. You know that the globalists are trying to get everybody online and only online so they can control and surveil information and also erase books, videos, whatever they want to in mass. That's why we're launching our answer to the internet kill switch, InfoWars magazine. The first issue, we printed over 90,000 copies of the September issue and it sold out in less than two days. So get your copy of the new technocratic elite issue today before it sells out. Again, we cover from the technocratic social engineers' own words, their own admissions, their plan to take over our society and replace us with robots. But we don't just stop with the rise of the robots and the end of humanity, or will humanity survive the singularity? We get into the government buying now 1.6 billion bullets against the American people. We get into Big Sis's surveillance of this magazine and my website, InfoWars.com. We cover QE3 and what hyperinflation means to you and your family. Whatever you do, don't look back later and wish that you would have taken action. Take action now. People have never been more ready for this information. People have never been this hungry, starving for the truth. And it is contained in the new issue of InfoWars magazine. This is a time capsule. It is so important we get it out to everyone. If you subscribe now for 12 issues, we will give you the first issue absolutely free. So that's 13 issues for our 13 colonies, part of restoring the spirit of 1776 worldwide. Again, go to InfoWarsStore.com and order 10 packs, up to 100 packs at cost, and give them out to people in your area. The response last month was incredible. People are hungry to actually hold this information in their hands. You can also subscribe and get 12 issues delivered to your door and get the first inaugural issue free. I'm Alex Jones, thanking all of you for your support and making our operation a huge success.